got a bunch of Alkane's multiple choice questions for you to try. So uh, the link to the questions is in the description as always. Um, so the sort of things covered by the questions include bonding, so sigma, pi, and also a bit of shape, um, isomerism, structural EZ cis trans, reactions of alkenes, the electrophilic addition mechanism, so that includes major and minor products, addition polymerization, and there's a moles calculation in there as well. So if you want to have a go at those, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so question one, which is the correct statement? You'll notice I've put some kind of explanation next to each one. So um, I'll go through all the answers, all the options. So CC bond in ethane is more polar than the CC bond in ethane. Well, that's not correct because they're both non-polar. They just contain carbon atoms, which have the same electronegativity. You'll notice I've put yep yeah, there. So a sigma bond is stronger than a pi bond. Um, the HCH bond angle in ethane, well, that's 109.5, and that's not greater than 120 that you've got in the uh, ethene molecule. And finally, a sigma bond is formed from the sideways overlap of p orbitals. No, nope, that's the pi bond. Question two, how many sigma and pi bonds are present in a molecule of this hydrocarbon? Well, all of the single bonds are sigma bonds. The thing to remember, I think this is testing you one, is that a double bond is a sigma and a pi bond. So the answer was 12 sigma and 2 pi. Question 3, which is the correct statement about the two structures? They've got the same empirical formula. Well, yes they have because they're both molecular formula C10H20. So they're both CH2 empirical. So that was the right answer. We'll just rule the others out while we're on. They have different relative molecular masses. Well, no, they have the same because of what we've said there. They are structural isomers. No, they're actually the same molecule because if you t if you pick that up and spin it around, you get that one there. Um, they have different functional groups. No, they're both alkenes. They've both got the CC double bond. So that was the right answer. Okay, so moving on to question four now. The first thing I'll say is a Z isomer where the priority groups are on the same side of the carbon carbon double bond, they can never be non polar because the molecules kind of skew to one side, so the dipoles won't cancel. So they'll be polar, so they're both wrong straight away. So we're left with these two. So what I've done is drawn their um, displayed formula and then I've established um, the priority groups on each carbon of the double bond. So on this one, the chlorine beats the carbon because of atomic number and likewise on this carbon, carbon beats hydrogen. So these um, priority groups are on diagonally opposite sides of the double bond and so that's going to be a polar molecule isn't it, the dipoles won't cancel. And if we look at this one, that carbon has the chlorine as the priority group, likewise that one, so they need to be opposite. So you can see this is a symmetrical molecule, the dipoles will cancel that's your non-polar one, so the answer was this one here. Question five, how many moles are in a standard 200 milligram ibuprofen tablet? So we've got the structure there. First thing you've got to do is work out the molecular formula, so there it is there. Then turn that into an MR, and then the moles, you've got to be careful here, this is milligrams, you've got to turn that into grams. So it's 0.2 grams over 206, gives that, so that was your answer. Question six, we've got to work out the name of the molecule. So first thing I would do is work out the longest continuous carbon chain. So we've got one, two, three, four. So it's a but in because the double bond starts at number two. So that rules these two out. So all we've got to do now is establish priority groups across the double bond. So on that carbon there, we've got the bromines, got the higher priority than the carbon. And on this carbon we've got this carbon here versus a hydrogen so that's got the priority there diagonally opposite each other so it's the E form of um, 2 bromobutuene. Question 7 we've got some awkward applications of the SIP rules on some of the carbons of these double bonds so double bond number one I've kind of expanded here so this, this carbon's quite easy because we've just got carbon versus hydrogen, so the methyl group is priority group on that carbon. 
on this carbon of the double bond, we've got this methyl group and then this group here. So because they're both carbons, we've got to look at what's directly attached to those carbons. So on the methyl group, we've got three hydrogens. On this carbon, we've got a double bonded carbon and a hydrogen. So the way the SIP rules work is that this is classed as two carbons, double bonded carbon, two carbons and a hydrogen. So obviously that's got priority over that. So these are diagonally opposite. So it's E for carbon, carbon, double bond number one. Number two is quite straightforward because on this carbon here, we've got a carbon versus a hydrogen. So priority. And on this carbon, you've got carbon versus a hydrogen. So again, the diagonally opposite. So it was double bond one is E, double bond two is also E. Number eight, which molecule is a Z isomer? So the first thing we're going to do is rule this, this one out straight away because it can't exhibit EZ because we've got two identical atoms on one of the carbons of the double bond. So all I'm going to do for A, B and C is establish priority groups on each carbon and then we can see if it's E or Z. So on this carbon, it's carbon versus hydrogen, so that's got priority. On this carbon, it's fluorine versus hydrogen, so that's got priority. So that's the E isomer. On B, chlorine versus hydrogen, priority on the chlorine. And on this carbon, fluorine versus carbon. Fluorine's got the priority because of the higher atomic number. So they're on the same side of the double bond. So that's the Z uh, isomer. So B is the answer. We'll just rule out C. On this carbon, fluorine versus chlorine. Chlorine's got priority. And on this carbon, carbon versus hydrogen. Carbon's got priority. So diagonally opposite again. So C is an E isomer. So the answer was B. Question nine's a bit like question seven, but it brings in cis trans as well we need to consider. Well, this isn't a cis or a trans isomer because we've got to have identical groups on each carbon of the double bond. So if I just use that methyl to illustrate, for this to be a cis or a trans isomer, you'd need a methyl group on this side as well because you compare the like groups across the double bond. So because we haven't got an identical group on the uh, left and the right, of the double bond, we can't class it as cis or trans. So it's gonna be E or Z. So again, so we've got identical carbons directly bonded to this carbon. So we look at what's attached to those. So on this one, we've got the carbon of the methyl group at the end and the two hydrogens, so CHH. On this carbon, we've got three H's. So obviously that's got priority because of the carbon. And then on these, again, we've got two carbons so if we look at this one, we've got, if I've, I've expanded it there, look. So we've got H and two C's, CCH, versus um, this carbon and two hydrogens, so CHH. So that's priority diagonally opposite. So it was the E isomer. Question 10 kind of moves into the reactions of the alkenes. So there's pentuene, there's bromine, there's the product. So that's 2, 3, dibromopentane. So that option there. Okay, so question 11, I'm going to go through the mechanism to explain this one. So ethene, bromine, a pair of electrons are attracted from the pi bond to the slightly positive bromine. So a pi bond's broken here, and that will the knock-on effect of that is to break this bond between the bromine atoms by heterolytic fission. So that's a sigma bond that's broken. So sigma and pi are broken. And then this new bond that's formed here, well, that's a sigma bond. And you get another bond formed there, which is a sigma bond. And so it was option D. So for question 12, we've got to look at the carbocation intermediate options. Remember when an unsymmetrical alkene reacts with hydrogen bromide or hydrogen halide, you, there are two possible products. So we'll run through the mechanism. So like before, we've got a pair of electrons, pi bond, pair of electrons attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen. That breaks the HBr bond. So the hydrogen can go there or there. So on this carbocation intermediate, I've put it there. The hydrogen's gone there, that carbon. So that means the positive charge goes here. 
whereas on this one I've put the hydrogen there so that's got the positive charge on. So then we need to look at how many carbons are directly bonded to the positive carbon. One, two, so that's a secondary carbocation intermediate. This one is only a primary because there's only that one carbon bonded directly to that one um, and that's more stable so that will form the major product. So it was option B. So question 13, similar to 12, but we've got to give the name of the major product. So the mechanism, and I'll focus on where does the hydrogen go or where could the hydrogen go. So if it goes there, you get this carbocation intermediate, which is secondary. If the hydrogen goes here, you get this carbocation intermediate, which is a tertiary one. That's more stable, so that will be the major product. What's this called? So you've got one, two, three, four, so it's butane, two bromo, two methyl butane. So what was that one there? Question 14, identify the monomer that would produce this polymer. So all I've done is sort of identified the repeat and then I'm turning that back into the monomer, the alkene monomer. So all you do is put a double bond between there and just lose these end bonds, you get that. What's that called? Propene. And finally, question 15, similar question to before. Um, chop it up into its repeat units, turn it back into the monomer. So we need to put a double bond there. So you'd have this. So what's the um, structural formula of that? CH2, CHCN, CH2, CHCN. So it was that one there.